Should we stand as we just prepare our hearts? I'm just going to read from Psalm 95. It says, O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for because he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Amen. Let us come and worship. Let us come and bow down before the Lord our God today in the name of Jesus. Father, we exalt you today. We exalt you, King Jesus. We exalt you, King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, we look to you. We look to you, O oh God, and our faces are radiant, Lord. We are never covered with shame, O oh God. Jesus, we worship you today. Lord, we let go of everything, Father God. We let go of every shame. We let go of every pain, O oh God. And Father, we seek you in your holiness. We seek you in your holiness, in the beauty of your splendor today, O oh God. Father, we thank you today that we will see God. Today we see you, Lord Jesus, King Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, Father God, we welcome you in, Lord. We welcome you in, Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus, have your way, oh God. Father, come and take your place. Come and take your place in our lives, Jesus. Come and have your way, oh God. Jesus, we love you. We honor you, Father God. Lord, we thank you that we are protected in you, Lord. We are protected in you, Jesus. Oh God, we thank you that you hold us in that secret place, Father. You hold us in your arms of love, oh God. Father, we worship you. Lord, we swim in your sea of your love, oh God. And Father, we forget the former things, Lord. We forget the former things, oh God. Jesus, we love you. Father God, come and have your way, Father. Lord Jesus, we thank you that every person finds that peace today, Father. We receive your peace in our hearts, Lord God. We thank you that every person, Lord God, every soldier of Christ here today, every soldier of Christ here today, every soldier, oh God, we receive your peace, Jesus, deep, deep, deep in our spirit, oh God. We receive your peace, Lord. We receive your love, oh God. We receive your honor, Abba Father. Oh God, have your way, Lord God. Come in like a mighty flood, Father. Come in like a mighty flood, oh God. We thank you that you wash over every wound, oh God. Father, we find our place in you today. We find our place in the you today, oh God. Jesus, we honor you. We honor you, Father God Almighty. Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for what you're going to do, Jesus. We bow low, Father. We bow low, oh God, in that secret place. We bow to you, Father God. Lord, as we receive your mind. We dedicate everything that we do today into your hands that you will be pleased, Father, to receive the sacrifice of our praise and worship today, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Good Friday, the day when Jesus washed our sins away. By his stripes we are healed. He was bruised for our transgressions. Our sins were put on him, the spotless Lamb of God. And death could not hold him because he was perfect. So that's why we can rejoice in it being a good Friday.
is counselor. He is counselor. He is mighty God. He is mighty God. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the Prince of Peace. The Omnipotent. The Omnipotent. He is wonderful. He is wonderful. He is radiant. I'm 
Jesus, we give you all glory. We give you all praise, Father. Lord, we're not worthy of standing in your presence this morning. But we invite you in, Lord, we invite you in to come and have your way. Lord, this morning we just remember you. We remember the cross, Lord, and we thank you for everything that Jesus endured. We thank you, Jesus, for the price that was paid. We thank you for the sacrifice. And we thank you for the gift of eternal life, Lord. God, even when we get busy, even when we get distracted, Lord, I pray we will never take for granted the gift of eternal life. Thank you, Jesus, that by your wounds we are healed. Thank you, Lord, that we can live free because of the sacrifice that was made. Thank you that there is no more sin, no more shame. Thank you that sin and death have been conquered. Thank you, Lord, that we can say with hope that it is finished. For we know what's still to come, God. We know what's still to come. We thank you that death has lost its sting. We thank you, Father, for making all things new. For making all things new. Worship team, can we sing that again? that it's truly a good Friday, Lord. We invite you in. Come and have your way this morning. We don't wanna be anywhere that you are not. We invite your presence in. We invite your spirit in, Lord. Come and take over this morning. We give you all glory, all honour and all praise. We ask for this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Good morning everyone and welcome to our Good Friday service. It is awesome to have you here. Who's glad it's a Good Friday? And who knows what's coming on Sunday? Amazing. You can take your seats. Why don't you give someone a hug as you sit down? Welcome them to church. If it is your first time here, can you give us a wave? Any first timers? Welcome, 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 welcome. Awesome to have you here. Anybody else? Awesome, great. Well, welcome everyone. And I know we don't normally have church on Fridays, but we appreciate you being here. Um, We are so excited. I've got a couple of announcements to make. We have a bigger service on Sunday. Uh, Resurrection Sunday service. His name is Jesus. It's on the 31st of March at 11 a.m. Who's coming along to that? Awesome. Why don't you bring a friend as well? It's a great Sunday to bring a neighbor, family. 
a family member or a friend along, so come along to that. There is no 6 p.m. service this Sunday. So if you normally come along to a 6 p.m. service, no one will be here this Sunday. Try and get along to the 11 a.m. service. Um, am I right in saying that there's going to be items, Pastor John, there's going to be dances, there's going to be songs, giveaways, free things, guys, free things, dances, performances, it's going to be good, come along. Is there any more announcements, Pastor John? No, that's it. Okay, excellent. Um, so we are now going to take our tithes and our offerings. Just going to quickly read from 1 Peter chapter 2, 21. For God called you to do good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example, and you must follow in his steps. This is where Paul, uh, sorry, Peter is telling us about the goal to give it all to God. And you know what? When we tithe, it means that we are committing, we are entrusting, we are giving over. Now, Jesus bought us with a price. Amen? Amen? The price was the pain on the cross. And let's be very honest, church. There's nothing that we can do to match the price that he paid. Amen? Amen. But our job here on earth is to carry the cross daily and to follow in his footsteps. And so I just want to encourage you this morning. Why don't you surrender? Why don't you commit? Why don't you give over every area of your life to God this morning, including your finances? And so are you okay if we stand as we pray for our tithes this morning? I'm just going to invite the offering team to come up the front. We've got our offering bags in the front, and there's a QR code behind me as well if you want to scan that and give. But Lord, we thank you that it is truly a good Friday, and we just thank you, Father, for the privilege that we have to give. Lord, there is nothing that we can do to match the price that you have paid for us. Lord, there is no amount of pain that we can endure, Lord, but I just pray that as believers today, God, we just remember you. We thank you, Father God, for the gift of eternal life. And God, we know that as we're here on earth, Lord, our job is really just to follow in your footsteps, to carry that cross daily. And Lord, we just surrender every area of our life today, Lord, including our finances. I pray for everybody that's giving this morning, Lord. I pray that you will bless it, you will multiply it, you will extend it, Father, so that your kingdom will be known here on earth, Lord. We ask for all of this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I just invite you along to come up the front if you want to give or scan the QR code. Awesome. Well, it's my privilege to welcome the leader of this house. Can we please stand as we honor Pastor John? Hallelujah. Happy Easter, everyone. You can take your seats. In fact, can we just honor Jesus one more time? Come on. Come on. Let's just honor him. Let's thank him for the cross this morning. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your power, your glory. We thank you for who you are. Amen and amen. You can grab your seat. Hallelujah. Well, I want to preach this morning on the blood. Everyone say the blood. I was praying just before I came up on the stage and was dwelling on the fact that angels longed to look into the mystery of the blood. 
And what a privilege it is this morning to preach on this topic. You think when we stand in eternity and we see the Lamb, the power of the blood, there's not going to be many more opportunities to preach on the blood than the privilege it is today for us to gather and talk about the precious blood of Jesus. I was like, Father, what an honor you've given me today to talk on this subject. And I pray today that there be revelation in this room. Lord, I pray right now that you break every mindset that thinks it knows it all on this subject and that you open our ears, open our minds over this next period of time, that revelation would flow like a river in this place, that we'd go to a whole nother level of what the blood means for us today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Amen. I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures. The Word is going to do the work. The Word of God's going to do the job this morning. But I'm going to put it in your spirit and it's going to do something on the inside of you. So let's start Leviticus chapter 17. Leviticus 17 verse 11. It says this. It says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar... To make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Right at the beginning, this is Old Testament before Jesus has even come. He says, the life is in the blood. I don't know if you know it, but there is blood flowing through your body right now. Without the blood, there is no life. If we were to slit you in half and your blood was to pour out today, by the time we were finished, there would be no life left inside of you. Who knows that to be the case? We don't need to do an example this morning. Life is in the blood. The blood represents life. Without blood, there is no life. Mama P is a district nurse. She spends her whole day throughout the week traveling around, taking people's bloods. That's her job, is to go to people and stick the needle in and draw out the blood. If you ever need a blood test, you know where to go. But life is in the blood. Who knows, if you were to test the blood, you discover a lot about the person. The health of the person is found within the blood. The blood carries the DNA. It carries the genetics. It shows everything there is to know. Life is in the blood. The blood flows. It flows around your body 144,000 times. The blood circulates your body in 24 hours. In fact, if you were to draw blood, the blood starts off light red, representing there's still life in that blood when it comes out of your body. But over time, even the blood will die as it becomes dark red. Who knows what I'm talking about? This morning, there is life in the blood. But it says in this scripture that the blood makes atonement for the soul. Right from the beginning, the blood was currency. The blood was the ransom by which we are set free. Let let me explain it like this. In fact... Rads and Araj, just come join me on the stage. I'm going to pick on you. Come, come, come. Come on, give them a round of applause. Give our our leaders in this house some love as they come up. Now, you stay there, Rads. Now, if I was to kidnap Araj, and I was to hold him captive, I would come to Radhika and I would say... Radhika, if you want your husband back, you're going to have to pay me £10,000. Now, she may say, it's all right, you can keep him. Yeah. Okay, if you want your husband, you've got to pay me £50. Okay, she might, she might, she might pay the price for 50 I'm, I'm sorry, my friend. I, th- I thought you were worth so much more. But she would come and she would pay 
the ransom in order to get the one who was captive set free. Are are you journeying with me this morning? And so those that have been kidnapped and held captive can be rescued via a ransom. Thank you, guys. Can I tell you this morning that the blood was your ransom fee? Oh, I'm going to need to unpack this some more this morning. I'm going to need some people to help me really go deep on this this morning. The blood is currency in the realm of the spirit. The blood has purchasing power. The blood can buy your redemption. It redeems you back. And I'm not talking about Jesus' blood yet. This was Old Covenant, Leviticus. He said there has to be blood for there to be atonement. You cannot get set free without the blood. In fact, we see it right from the book of Genesis. After man fell, Adam and Eve, they got uh, leaves and fig leaves and they began to cover themselves. Who knows what I'm talking about? Uh, Are you grateful you don't walk around in fig leaves? But God says the fig leaves will never be good enough. And in Genesis chapter 3, verse 21... It says, Adam and his wife, also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made them tunics of skin and clothed them. Now, I need you to see this. You see, they have just fallen. They're clothing themselves with leaves. And he was, God was like, leaves will never cover your sin. The only thing that can cover your sin is blood. And so he sacrifices an animal and he clothes them in the skin of an animal. Oh. Right from the beginning there had to be blood. Hebrews 9, 22 says this. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. There's no forgiveness. There can be no forgiveness without blood being shed. Abel was killed and his blood cried out from the ground. Can I tell you there is a principle in the Bible that when an innocent man is killed... His blood will always cry out from the ground. His blood began to speak and the blood of Abel began to cry out from the ground for vengeance. It began to cry out from the ground for justice. And whatever the blood cries will be done. Abel was dead, but his blood still cried. Does everyone know their Bibles? I don't want to go there, but I want you to understand this. You see, when Satan did what he did to Jesus, an innocent man, can I tell you his blood still began to cry? Except Jesus' blood does not cry out for vengeance. Jesus' blood cries out forgiveness. Whoa, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. It cries out that the result of killing an innocent man is that it would release the one who was guilty. The ransom fee has been paid. You know, the blood reminds Satan that if it was just for the innocent one to be punished as guilty, then it's just for the guilty one to be proclaimed innocent. Uh, I'm dropping bombs right now. and uh, It declares, he said, you know what? It's just for me to put this innocent man upon the cross and he died for sins. Well, I want to tell you when that blood fell on the floor, it declared in heaven that it is justice for the guilty ones to be declared innocent. Whoa. There is no bill that this blood cannot pay. This wasn't the blood of goats, not even the blood of man. This blood originated in heaven. 
He was born of a virgin. He didn't have an earthly father. He was born of God. His blood was heavenly. I want to tell you that his blood was sufficient to pay the price for your sins. In fact, it wasn't just sufficient. This was an overpayment. This was more than enough. This was greater. In fact, it didn't just purchase your salvation. It purchased your healing. It purchased your deliverance. It purchased your freedom. Oh, I'm preaching on the blood right now I need someone to be grateful in this house yay more than sufficient Hebrews chapter 10 says and every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can take away sins but this man this man After he'd offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. And from that time, waiting till his enemies are made a footstool, for by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. 1 Peter chapter 1 puts it this way, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. We have been ransomed We have been set free by his blood. Proverbs 26 verse 2 says this. It says, like a flitting sparrow, like a flying swallow, so a curse without cause shall not alight. Can I tell you in the realm of the spirit, everything is about legal rights. That everything you go for is about the legality that the enemy has over your life in the realm of the spirit. There is nothing the enemy can't do. There's nothing the enemy can do unless he has a legal right. Does anyone know what I'm preaching about? An open door, a a sin, uh, something in the realm of the spirit, even generationally, that allows the enemy to come in. That's why we teach you, you need to repent, you need to renounce, you need to break these things in the realm of the spirit. As the, the Lord begins to reveal them, we cancel the legal rights that the enemy has in our life. But I want to tell you, This morning that the blood of Jesus breaks every legal system that the enemy holds over your life. The blood has the power to break every accusation that the enemy might bring against you. Who knows, Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Hazel, if I can borrow you for a moment. Now let's say me and Hazel were to fall out. And I was to do something wrong to her. And she was going to say, Pastor John, I'm going to take you to court. And she began to accuse me of what I was doing wrong. Now, I might settle with her outside of court. And I might say to her, you know what? I did you wrong. I'm going to pay you one million pounds. Machete ke rabaye. And she would say, thank you, Jesus. And she would... Take her million pounds. But who knows from that moment on, she could never accuse me of what has already been settled. Oh, I don't know if I've got any preachers in this place. But I've come to tell you the legal requirements have been settled. The payment has been settled by the blood. The blood. There is no more legal rights he has against me. In fact, the blood doesn't just declare that the bill has been played. The the blood declares that I am dead. This is what Galatians says. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. 
It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Do you know what this means? It means when the devil comes to accuse me, he cannot find me anymore. I'm already dead. When he sees me, he sees the blood. He sees Jesus. There are no more legalities in the realm of the Spirit. I don't care what your generations have done. I don't care what you've been through. I want to tell you, you're of a new bloodline this morning. The blood of Jesus Christ. No more legal rights. The blood has settled the claim. Can you say amen this morning? And so I want to show you this morning, that was my introduction. I want to show you this morning six times that the blood was spilled. Six times that we see this blood being spilled. Are you ready for them? I said, are you ready for them? The first time we see the blood spilled is before the foundation of the world. Can I tell you that Jesus was the lamb who was slain before the foundations? This blood did not start to spill on earth at the cross. The blood was already spilled before the foundation of time. Exodus chapter 12, the first time they celebrated the Passover. And they did it every year from that point. And they would sacrifice a lamb. And then they would anoint the doorposts with the blood. Who knows what I'm talking about? It became the Passover feast and they would eat the lamb. Someone said to me, do you know what they ate at Passover? When I was like, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it'd be lamb. They ate lamb, whoever asked me that question. They ate the lamb. They would sacrifice the lamb. They would put the blood on the doorpost and then they would eat the lamb. And verse 13, it says this. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Now, I need you to catch this this morning. The blood does not protect you from the devil. Well, it does, but that's not the point. This teaches us. The blood protects us from God. Uh Uh-oh, I'm about to mess with someone's theology. (laughs) Just pop that back on the screen for me. Look at what he says. It says, when I see the blood, it's coming. Exodus 12, 13. I want you to know it's not me saying it. This is not John's ideas. He says, when I see the blood, I, everyone say I. I I will pass over you. Not the devil. God says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. You know who the blood protects us from? The blood protects us from the wrath of God. You see, on judgment day, the only question will be, are you under the blood? Oh, You want to know whether the wrath can come on your life? Is there blood applied to your life? If there's blood applied to your life, hallelujah, you get to go in. It's not going to be by your good works. It's not going to be by your efforts. It's by the blood of Jesus Christ. And the blood still saves us from the wrath of God. And so then we get to the New Testament and in John chapter 1 and verse 29, it says this. It says, the next day, this is John the Baptist, he saw Jesus coming toward him and he said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 1 Corinthians 5.17 puts it this way, therefore, Purge out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, since you truly are unleavened. For indeed, Christ, our Passover, 
was sacrificed for us. Who knows, he is the Passover lamb. He is the Passover lamb. Revelation 13, I'm trying to take you somewhere. Revelation 13 verse 18 says this, All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb. Who's that talking about? Jesus, our Passover Lamb, who was slain from the foundation of the world. Now, I'm trying to get you to see something this morning. Jesus was crucified long before he stepped on that cross. Oh. Can we we go deep? Can Can you do deep on a good Friday? Can you? Can we go a little bit deeper? This is what Hebrews chapter 9 says. Hebrews 9. It says, therefore, it was necessary... That the copies of the things in the heavens should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Ah. Oh. Not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enter the most holy place every year with blood of another. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now I know this is a deep scripture. I'm I'm about to try and... Take something that's not of this world and try and explain it in worldly language. Who knows? This becomes very hard. But can I tell you that the heaven also needed cleansing? Oh. That's what he said. He took the blood to the heavens to cleanse some things in the heavens. Can I tell you when Lucifer fell and a third of the angels fell with him, there were some things that needed cleaning in the heavens. His sacrifice was not just for the earth. He took the blood. Who knows? He took his blood up to the heavens and cleansed the heavens as well as the earth. Wow. Wow. In fact, it says in this scripture, it says the things on the earth were just copies of what had already taken place in the heavens. The tabernacle, this sacrificial worship system was just a copy of what had already taken place. Can I tell you the reason it says that Jesus was crucified before the foundation of the world is because in heaven there is no such thing as time. In eternity, he has always been the lamb. In eternity, he has always had nail-pierced hands and nails in his feet. He was the lamb from the beginning, but heaven has caught up with the copy that was in heaven. My God. Everything on earth is a copy of what is in the heavens. Leviticus 14 verse 28 says this. It says, and when the priest shall put some of the oil that is in his hand on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed on the thumb of the right hand and on the big toe of his right foot, on the place of the blood of the trespass offering. This is Levitical order. Keep that on the screen for me. This is Levitical order that actually before the oil could be put on the priest, blood had to be applied first. Oh, I wish I could unpack this. Wow, machete ke. But I just want to tell you this morning, the model on earth was a copy of what happens in heaven. Can I tell you before the oil of the spirit could be poured out, first the blood had to be applied. Mm. The oil of the spirit can't come until the blood is applied. Once the blood was poured out, the oil of the Spirit could be poured out. 
He was crucified before the foundation of the world. The second place the blood was spilled was in the garden. In the garden. What started in a garden ended in a garden. Luke 22, in the garden of Gethsemane, it says, And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. One version, and I believe in the Hebrew, in the Greek, it says the same thing. He began to sweat drops of blood. His blood fell before time, but the first time we see in this Passion Week, his blood fall on the earth was in a garden in prayer. What started in a garden with Adam ends in a garden with Jesus. And he says, if you're willing, take this cup from me, but not my will be done, but your will be done. I want to tell you this morning, Lucifer said, my will be done. But Jesus said, not my will be done, but your will be done. Oh. And he resisted to the point that he prayed until he sweat blood. This gives us the ability to say yes to Jesus. If he'd not done what he did, you would never be able to say yes. The garden speaks of the heart, the soil of your heart. Can I tell you, Jesus' blood came to cleanse the soil of your hearts. That we can say, not my will, but your will be done. The third place we see his blood shed was when he was whipped. Oh, I feel the Lord. Matthew 27 verse 26 says this, Then he released Barabbas to them. And when he scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. John 19 verse 1, so it says, So then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. In fact, he wasn't just whipped. He was scourged. It was more than being whipped. It was flangulation. He was beaten with a cat of nine tails. This was leather that had bones and glass tied to the leather straps. Forty times he was whipped upon his back, lash after lash after lash. It was torture. Every whip would tear away his flesh. Forty times that whip would crack and strike his body as his blood fell to the ground. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful for Jesus this morning. I'm grateful for what he's done for us. Isaiah 52, 14 says this. It says, just as many were astonished at you, so his visage was marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of men. The NIV puts it this way. It says, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being. He was so disfigured on the cross that he was marred more than any other person in history. But I want to tell you this morning, that was not in vain. You see, his blood being shed would have been enough to purchase your soul. But he took the stripes so you could be healed. Without the shedding of blood, all they needed was a sacrifice and you could have received the remission of sins. But he took those stripes upon his back that you would not just be saved, but you would be healed. Isaiah 53, 5 says, By his stripes... We have been healed. How can I not receive healing when he purchased it for me? How can I not take the full price of what he's paid? You know, if we were to go to a restaurant this afternoon and I was to pay for the meal, who knows it would be rude for you to say, oh, no, I don't want it now and walk home. He has paid 
the price for your healing. Ooh. Oh, I want to tell you, it'll be rude for you not to take your healing when he was whipped for your healing. It would be rude for you not to take your deliverance when he was beaten for your healing. Psalm 129, 3. I'm nearly there. It says, the plow was plowed on my back. They made their furrows long. Not only was he whipped, but he knew what was coming. He was fulfilling prophecy. He knew what was going to come. That's why in the garden he was saying, Father, take this cup from me. It was not just the torment of what he experienced, but the torment of knowing what was about to come. Whipped. The fourth time we see his blood spilled is when he was pierced. John 20, 25 says, the other disciples speaking, we've seen the Lord. But Thomas, he says to them, unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. He was nailed to Golgotha's tree. Nails pierced his hands. Nails pierced his feet. His hands were nailed so that your hands could set the captives free. His feet was pierced so that your feet could have dominion. That wherever your soles of your feet will tread, he's giving to you. That you would trample the scorpion under your feet. That the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Whoa. Pierced. Isaiah 53 says this, but... He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. The NIV says it this way. He was pierced for our transgressions. Beaten for our iniquities. Pierced for your iniquities. You know what an iniquity is? An iniquity is a sin that has been so long unrepentant that it forms in a life that it gets passed on to a following generation. Iniquity. Can I tell you, Jesus didn't just die for your sins. He died for your iniquities. Those besetting sins. There is no sin that his blood cannot wash away. There is no addiction that his blood cannot wash away. The lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Number five, a crown of thorns. Matthew 27, 29 says, And when they twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Blood flowed down his face. Can I tell you his blood can cleanse every mental sickness. His blood can heal every personality disorder. There is no depression that the blood of Jesus cannot break. His blood fell from his head. In fact, if we were to go right back to Genesis and we were to look at the curse that came in through Adam, it says in Genesis 3.19, in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are and to dust you shall return. The curse said you're going to sweat for your life you're going to sweat for your living you're going to sweat to earn can I tell you when Jesus sweat blood in the garden when the crown was placed upon his head he broke the curse of Genesis 3 19 that you no longer have to work for the blessing it's not my work he did it on the cross I'm not blessed because of my holiness I'm blessed because he paid the price for me The blood qualifies you to be blessed. He took the crown of thorns so that you could be crowned in this life. To be seen as Jesus Christ, to have access to the throne, to be crowned. 
But the final place I want to tell you he shed blood this morning was in his heart. John 19, 34 says, But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. Jesus had already died. He'd said, into my hands I commit my spirit. He'd given up his last breath. And the, de- the centurions around the cross, they want to make sure he's really dead. They'd never seen anything like it. The sky had gone black and he breathed his last and died. And so they took a spear and they pierced his side. And the Bible says that blood and water began to flow out of his side. Scientists say that the reason there would be blood and water was because his heart had imploded. Can I tell you this morning that Jesus died of a broken heart? Oh my God. Rejected by his own people. Pilate rejected him and then the final pain, and I believe this is the greatest pain of the cross. The pain of the cross was not in his sufferings. This is where he suffered and as brutal as it was, we've heard about it, the real pain takes place right now when in that moment he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? rejected by God and he was rejected so you can be accepted he was forsaken so that he could say to you I will never leave you nor forsake you oh He takes his covenant with you seriously. It's a covenant he purchased in his blood that he said, I don't care what you do. You will never let, I will never let go. I will hold you in the palm of my hands. His blood is sufficient to get you there, to keep you there. Oh, are you saying you're preaching once saved, always saved? I'm preaching there's power in the blood. Worship team, if you come, keys, if you'll give me some keys. You see, there was no covering for him. No blood to cover him. He was the sacrifice. If you can give me worthy is the lamb. He was the innocent who died that the guilty would go free. He was the Passover lamb protecting us from the wrath of God. And he is the one who has now been proclaimed king. But can I tell you this morning, he hasn't just been proclaimed king of the Jews. He's been proclaimed king of all kings. And I'm moved this morning by the cross. But I'm not moved by what he suffered. I'm not feeling sorry for Jesus. I'm moved with gratitude. I'm grateful for what he's done for me. Oh, I'm thankful for the cross. Uh, uh, You see, I've tried to preach this, that you would just find something on the inside of you that will begin to say, thank you for the cross. Thank you that you would die for me. I don't know, maybe there's five people in this room who are grateful this morning. Maybe maybe there's a few people in this place who understand he did it for you. He died for you. He was whipped for you. Oh, this is why we celebrate what we celebrate. That God would become a man and pay for our sins. That he didn't leave us on our own, but he said, I'm going to ransom you. You were held captive, but he paid the price that you could go free. 
If you're grateful this morning, I want you to do this. I know there's not much space, but I want you to stand in this room. If you're thankful this morning, and maybe some of you want to just come out, just come find a space. But I want us to show our gratitude to Jesus in this place. It's not my works. There's nothing good in me that would give God pleasure. But I'm covered by the blood. I need some people who are thankful this morning. I, need, I, I, I know it's Friday, but I need some people who are grateful for the blood. He's in this room. I, I may have taken you to a place that's a little bit, little bit deep, but I, I need some people to find some thanksgiving this morning. Maybe you need to let go of your sin today. Maybe you need to just say, you know what? Without the blood, I'm nothing. Without His blood, I can do nothing. Father, we thank you for your blood. Apply your blood in this place over our lives right now in Jesus' name. Let your blood cover us. I pray right now that every sickness leaves this room in the name of Jesus. All disease goes right now. Every demon flees. Every legal right in the spirit. We cut it off now by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we thank you there is no more accusations. The enemy has no right, no hold. We are thankful this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bearing all my sin and shame In love you came And gave amazing grace Thank you for this love, Lord Come on, church Thank you for the help Wash me in your cleanse
blood of Jesus Christ we declare today we will never take it for granted the lamb slain before the foundation of the world the lamb still seated in heaven still bearing the scars in his hands we thank you Jesus for your sacrifice we are eternally grateful that you would do this for us Redeemers, ransomers, your atonement sufficient for us. We are forever grateful in this house. We thank you for the blood and we give you praise in Jesus' name. If you're thankful, come on, give him a, give him a shout, give him some praise. No, I said if you're thankful, I, I need some people who are grateful. I'm grateful. I'm, I'm more grateful than that. Come on, I'm more grateful. We're grateful. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the cross. We're going to hand out communion. Thank you. Grab a cup, grab some bread. Wow. Spirit of the Lord is amongst us. First the blood, then the Spirit. First the blood, then the oil. Preach the blood, you get the Spirit. Jesus. When you've got your cup and your bread, just hold it for a moment. Give them a moment longer. If you still need communion, give me a wave. Is there anyone that hasn't got it yet? Just a few along here if we can help them out as well. Anyone else, you still need communion, give us a wave. Over on the far side, there's another row here as well. Um, Harriet, I think we need more over that side. If you need communion, just keep your hand in the air for me just so we can get, get to you. Hallelujah. Everyone got? Just hold your bread. Say this with me. His body broken for you. We receive it now, in Jesus' name, you can take. Hold your blood. Everyone say it with me. Say, his blood shed for me. I receive it today. You can take.
Thank you, Lord. Who knows the beauty of the cross we've talked about today. But who knows this is not where the story ends. The story doesn't end with a cross. The story ends with an empty tomb. Yeah, that's a good place to clap. This is just the first part. There's still a sequel to come on Sunday. I I, I don't know about you, but I don't want to leave him on the cross. You see, he doesn't stay on the cross, but he gets buried in the tomb. And the Bible says that three days later, he rose again from the dead. Such was the sacrifice, sufficient enough. The death could not hold him. The grave could not contain him. He came back up from the grave. Oh, come on. I need someone to praise him. Yay. This is the gospel. This is the good news. This is the good news. The blood was enough. The blood was enough. The blood was enough. If he stayed dead, we'll still be dead. But he's alive. And because he's alive, so will we live. That's the power of the blood. Can you say amen? We're going to do one more thing and then we're going to finish this morning. I don't know if we can sing he's alive. You know, I love he's alive. But before we finish, I don't know this morning, maybe there's someone here that you don't know Jesus and I don't think I could ever preach him more crucified than what I did this morning. This is the gospel that he would do this for you. If you're here this morning and you say, yeah, Pastor John, I want you to pray for me. I need Jesus to forgive me. I know there may be just one person in this room who would say yes to Jesus. If that's you, I want to pray for you. Give me a wave. Is there anyone this morning you need Jesus to forgive your sins? Then I want to pray for you. Give you a moment. I know it's Good Friday. Normally just the church. But I want you all to pray this prayer with me, those watching online as well. Everyone say, Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Today, I confess you as my Lord and Saviour. I turn from my sins and I turn to you. I am born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we ask you to get in touch. We want to pray for you, stand with you, get yourself in a church, read the Bible and get connected. Hallelujah. Who's ready for Sunday? Come on, don't miss it this Sunday here in the house. We're going to celebrate the resurrection. We're going to celebrate the empty tomb. We're going to celebrate that He is alive. If you believe He's alive, shout, He is alive. And may the outrageous love of the Father, the extravagant grace of Master Jesus, and the intimate fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Your best days are ahead of you. God's not finished with you yet. The blood speaks a better word. The blood speaks life. The blood speaks healing. The blood speaks deliverance. This is your time to rise and be crowned in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. We'll see you Sunday.
he's alive And there's nearly been 15 And he's alive And the grave has been denied He's alive So no longer has no need For the grave is empty Jesus is alive He's alive Yeah. Uh-huh.